Hi, my name is Brian Campbell and I'm the tree science lead for the NASA Globe Observer Trees Tool. Recently, I took some tree height observations around my property in Salisbury, Maryland, and I wanted to share with you something that's really cool that you can do by looking at your data that you get for tree height observations using the NASA Globe Observer Trees Tool and a comparison to the ICESat-2 satellite data using an online tool called Open Altimetry. That's openaltimetry.org, O-R-G. So if you look here, what you're seeing here in this image is you're actually seeing a screenshot that I got from the app on my phone. And this shows you the tree that I took the observations of. And you can see there's all the information, everything from the latitude, longitude, um, the site name, uh, the height, and the circumference that I took. What I want to focus on here quickly is the latitude and longitude and eventually the height of the tree. So let's get out of this and then go into the Open Altimetry page. So the Open Altimetry page, as I mentioned, can be found at openaltimetry.org. So when you go into it, you will see this. So you want to go to the red box that says Browse ISAT2 Data. So we're going to go in there and you're going to get this, this big uh, global map of ISAT2. So as you can remember, I had a latitude and longitude of the tree that I took the observation of on my property. So if you go into this little section here, you can see this is a calendar this shows you the days that the ISAT2 data is available. But if you want to go to a specific area, okay, you can click on this little arrow here, and it says, when you open it up, it says input map extension center or center map on a point. We're going to center the map on a point because we have the geolocated tree coordinates from the tree that I took. So I'm going to just enter this information and on this site, um, it's a bit odd, but it longitude is first. So make sure you see that, that you put the longitude in first. So my longitude happens to be uh, minus 75.6348. My latitude is 38.4315. I'm going to click update map. And what it's going to do is it's going to center that location in the middle of the map. So I'm going to zoom in here, okay, to that. And if you get a little off track, you can hit update map again. And I'm going into Salisbury, Maryland. It's on the eastern shore of Maryland on the Delmarva Peninsula, Delmarva, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. Okay, and I'm going to get, uh, you know, off center on purpose. So when I zoom in, I'm going to hit update map again. Oops, sorry, right here. And... If I want to go in as far as I can go, I can go click this all the way up till it gets to 100% or up to the top. And then I can click this update map again to make sure I'm centered. And once you get in here, okay, you will see a bunch of, uh, you know, the location that you're looking for right here. And you'll see over here on the right side, it'll see ATL06 all the way through 13. Those are the laser photons, okay? Now, I took the observation, and what I happened to do previous to this, I looked for where the ISAT-2 satellite was near my location, all right? Now, you can actually do this if you zoom out here a little bit. You can see these tracks, okay? But if you click on a track, it'll show you the dates that I said to was over or nearby your area. And you can click on that one or you can click on this one because they're on either side. Okay. So the one that I saw that was really nice was this one right here. It was on January 30th of 2019. And as you can see, these three tracks come up and these dot, these colored dots represent the photons. Each one of these pairs of beams represent what's called the weak beam and the strong beam. But each one of these shows um, a photon. And if you click on a photon, you, you will then be able to see the elevation data from that photon from my set too. 
So I'm gonna go in here, right in here, my property sits right in here in Salisbury, Maryland, okay? And this have this photon right here happens to have hit on our property. So if I click on that photon, okay, I can see some information about it. I can see the latitude and longitude, which matches up completely perfectly with the tree out observation I did with the trees tool on NASA Globe Observer. And then if I wanna click, the, what I can do here is I can click on view photon data, or my suggestion is up here on the left, top left side, it says select a region, click on that, and then you can go in directly and look at this location. So I'm going to go in and just choose a specific grid here that shows a bunch of the photons so I can see a nice little map. And once you do that, you can click view elevation profile and then it'll load up the graphs associated with this. Everything from the ground elevation canopy surface and to canopy heights. As you can see, these yellow dots represent all the photons that are in that grid, okay? Now, if I go back to this, the one that I'm looking for is right here. So this would be one, two, three, fourth one. So this would be the fourth photon. So let's go back to this. So one, two, three, four. And there's my photon. And it says the height of that is 19.667, all right? So I'm going to stop sharing this and bring up a combination of things that I put together in order to see the comparisons between the two. All right, so this is a nice little uh, chart I put together. As you can see on the left side, it's showing that same background that I used uh, from open altimetry that I did that grid. Here is the trees tool observation here. And I also happen to do, and I want to mention, I did land cover with it because trees are part of land cover. So if you happen to be doing using the trees tool, you should probably try to get a land cover uh, observation as well using the land cover tool on the NASA Global Observer. All right. So here, let's go back to this. So I went and I did a, uh, a screenshot and I grabbed the ground elevation and, surf and canopy surface and the canopy height data. And I put it here on this chart. And I want you to see this amazing comparison. On ISAT 2, the latitude and longitude basically fits to within a thousandth of a degree, which is pretty amazing. The canopy height that ISAT 2 says the basically average tree height in the area that that photon footprint hit, which is about a 13 meter in diameter footprint from ISAT 2, it says it was approximately 19.66 meters. The tree height that I got from the tree that I measured. And what I should also mention when I was out in the woods taking this observation, I looked, I eyeballed and looked for a tree that was representative of kind of the median height. Not the tallest one, not the smallest one, but something in the middle. And I did, and that gave me, through the NASA Global Observer, gave me 18.93 meters. Also, I did some elevation observations and uh, through I said two about 14.87 meters the elevation on my cell phone at the time was 14.93 meters so you can see this is a really nice correlation between the NASA Globe Observer trees tool tree height observation and the ice set to the ice cloud and land elevation satellite two observations from over 300 miles above the earth's surface using laser altimetry so I just wanted to showcase this with you that you can actually go and do some really cool comparisons of the data that you get from the NASA Globe Observer Trees tool and the ISAT 2 satellite using the online open altimetry tool. Thanks so much and have a great time using the NASA Globe Observer. Thank you.